Hello everyone, in today's video I will be showing you the type of data that can be generated using the data analysis pipeline that I generated for Cancer BioPortal. To begin my research, I started out with an exploratory study of mutated genes common to both breast and liver cancer. I then did a cross-exploratory study to compare those genes to genes commonly expressed in metastatic breast cancer. This led to the identification of five genes that I wanted to include in my study. CD53, CDK12, PIK3CA, MZ, and P10. I then run a query on these genes, and so the next few slides you'll see will be the data that was generated as a result of this query. The first data set is the ONGO print, which just provides a concise summary of all the genetic alterations that are present in the genes included in the study. As you can see, I've added a few additional tracks that I wanted to include in my specific study. Starting from the top, there is samples per patient, the med diagnostic ER status, the diagnostic HER2 status, the diagnostic PR receptor status, the status of liver metastasis at any course during the disease, and the status of the metastatic site at the time of diagnosis. Then below are all the genes that were included in my specific query. As you can see, there's quite a few colors, so I'm going to give you a quick breakdown of what all those mean. Blue is inconclusive, meaning that they could not determine the status of the receptor or the status of metastasis at any point during the disease. Orange is for a negative result, while teal is for a positive result. And the colors for the metastatic site at the time of diagnosis, um, the dark green and the light green represent metastasis to the liver at some point during the course of the disease. Down below are all the genes that were included in my query, along with their percentage of alteration frequency. Red is for amplifications, while green represents missense mutations. Black represent truncating mutations, such as nonsense mutations and splices. And blue are for deep deletions. And based on this, um, a lot of the cases of breast cancer liver metastasis occurred in the luminal A cancer subtype, which is hormone receptor positive and HER2 receptor negative. Also, MZ and CDK12 exhibited a majority of amplifications, while PRK3CA, P10, and TP53 showed majority mutations. The next data set is the cancer type summary for all of the query genes. As you can see, each of the summaries provide an alteration frequency breakdown for how frequent these alterations happen in each specific gene. Down below is a table that I made with a percentage breakdown of all the specific alterations and their alteration frequency for each of my individual genes. And based on this analysis, PIK3CA, P10, and CP53 are most frequently mutated, while MZ and CDK12 are most frequently amplified. Here is a mutual exclusivity chart showing the tendency for co-occurrence versus, versus mutual exclusivity for different gene pairs included in my query. The genes that exhibit mutual exclusivity are genes that are likely to have genetic alterations that happen in one tumor independent of other alterations. These genes are likely to be involved in the same pathway. Genes exhibiting co-occurrence are genes where their genetic alterations are happen in multiple, sample, multiple genes in the same cancer sample. Based on an analysis of this data, it was shown that CP53 and CDK12 have a significant tendency for co-occurrence. PIK3CA and MZ co-occur as well as PIK3CA and CDK12. A majority of the gene pairs involving P10 um, exhibit a tendency for mutual exclusivity, demonstrating that these genes are likely to be involved in the same pathway with one another. Here are the mutation charts that were generated for TB53, PIK3CA, and P10. These charts show the mutations on specific proteins in their specific amino acid locations with their frequency of occurrence. Each lollipop represents a different amino acid, while the line from the protein to the amino acid represents the frequency for which this mutation occurred. Based on this analysis, CB53 mutations were most observed to occur on the R248 amino acid. These are mo the most aggressive and exhibit lung and liver metastases. 
For PIK3CA, most of its mutations were on the H104RL amino acids, which are predicted to be oncogenic. This mutation contributes to the oncogenic stress that is exhibited by the cells and contributes to the signaling of the PI3K signaling pathway. Most P10 mutations were observed to occur on the T319 slash L318 TFS8 amino acids. And these mutations are often a shallow or deep deletion of P10, which also signals for the PI3K signaling pathway. Here are the plot charts for CDK12 and MZ, which both which show that these genes mRNA expression were significantly increased when these genes were amplified in the samples. This is very significant as both of these genes are regulators of other genes and transcription factors. Specifically, MZ downregulates the expression of microRNA31, which is an anti anti-metastatic microRNA. Downregulation of this microRNA leads to the increased rate of tumor growth and metastasis. CDK12 amplification increases the rate of tumor progression and maintains the differentiated state of cancer stem cells. It also changes the expression of dam DNA damage repair genes. Here are the plot charts for PIK3CA, P10, and TP53, and there is a complete difference in the charts for these genes versus CDK12 and MZ. PIK3CA and P10 had increased mRNA expression when these genes were diploid. However, for TP53, its mRNA expression was increased when TP53 was deleted. Here are the CN segments for TP53, PIK, 3CA, and P10, and these CN segments provide a visualization of the copy number alterations that are across the genome. For the blue regions of the copy number segment, that represents deletions, while the light pink represents low-level gains, and the deeper red represents amplifications. Based on this, TP53 was shown and P10 were shown to have a loss of function, while PIK3CA, which encompassed mostly low-level gains and amplifications in its genome, exhibited a gain of function. CN segments for CDK12 and MZ both had a majority of low-level gains and amplifications present in its genome, ex exhibiting a gain of function for both of these genes. Here are some of the pathways the portal um, provided for how the genes in my query interact with one another. And so the genes that were included in my query, as you can see, have a thick border around them. And so in all these pathways for TP53, DNA stress and oncogenic stress were shown to change the function of TP53 from a tumor suppressor to a tumor promoter, promoting cell survival and proliferation. For PI3K, and CA and P10, they were often interacting with one another, one another to signal the PI3K signaling pathway. However, there was no pathway provided by the portal that involved CDK12 and MZ. However, based on the previous data already analyzed, it was evident that these genes play some role in a pathway in breast cancer liver metastasis. Based on an analysis of all this data, an interaction pathway for how these genes are interacting with one another to contribute to breast cancer liver metastasis was constructed. In this pathway, the deletion of P10 led to the activation of PIK3CA, which signaled for the PI3K signaling pathway. This activated a KT, which then can activate an MD2 or TSC1 and 2. In the event that TSC1 and 2 are activated, this activates MTOR, which leads to cell survival and proliferation. In the event that MMD2 is activated, this inactivates CP53 and leads to cell cycle and survival and continued proliferation. PIK3CA is believed to activates MZ and CDK12. In the event that CDK12 is activated, this leads to the further signaling for TP53. In the event that MZ is activated, this leads to the downregulation of the microRNA31 and leads to increased metastasis of these cancer cells. Based on this data analysis, it can be concluded that 
TP53, PIK3CA, P10, CDK12, and MZ do interact to contribute to breast cancer liver metastasis. Additionally, this pipeline is efficient and feasible for classroom research use as the portal is free and available to the public. For future directions, we would look into targeting a gene for, to look at the effect that it has on the interaction pathway and potentially use this in therapy and treatment to improve survival rates of patients diagnosed with this disease. Additionally, this pipeline will be implemented in the classroom um, for research and the identification of other genes for future research. I hope this video was useful. Bye guys.